Iran has chosen to antagonize the West in just about the worst way possible while conducting a ballistic missile test, which is itself slightly antagonizing. Uh, they put onto one of the missiles, Israel should be wiped off the earth, written in Hebrew, which was a nice touch that they actually wrote in Hebrew. Yeah. But probably not the right the message they should have put there. This was confirmed by an official IRNA news agency, which said the aim was to show the Islamic Republic's deterrent power and all-out readiness to counter any threat. Now, we have the response from uh, Democrats and Republicans in America to this uh, provocation. What do you think? Yeah, it's monumentally stupid um, because we just did the deal and you guys barely escaped those sanctions which were killing your economy. Now you want to antagonize us and encourage our right wing to counterattack and to ruin the deal. So it is so monumentally dumb and, and, and aggressive and confirms people's worst fears about you. Now, luckily, they don't have nukes to put on those missiles because we made a deal to take away their nukes. <laughs> Now they never had any nuclear missiles, they had a nuclear energy program, they never even had enough material to build a single nuke, but it's a good thing we prevented them before they got there. Yeah. That was the whole point of this treaty and so mission accomplished in that front. They still have missiles, they just can't put nukes on them, they don't have nukes, etc. Right? Uh, we can't take away their missiles, they already had them, we'd have to mm -hmm. you know, go and do a ground invasion in order to take away all their weapons. They do get to test their missiles from time to time. I know it drives us crazy, uh, but yes, they do. And from their perspective, they think, well, you guys are constantly threatening us. Oh, yeah, we'll threaten you. Okay. There's a certain wisdom to that. No, we do I get threaten it. them constantly. We I, threaten them in response to what they said. I get it, but. Um, and we should. And I know that they, we stoke our own nationalism, so they're stoking their own nationalism, yeah. and it's the oldest trick in politics. At the same time, they have to realize they're not us, they're not Russia, they don't have as much power and strength. That's they, true. They'd like to, uh, you know, maybe antagonize us a little bit, but you better be careful because if you antagonize us too much, we do have right wing monsters here who will start a yeah. war over ego or any excuse to start a war. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the lib in me that thinks that it matters that there is a similarity in the tactics of politicians on both sides. I realize that this will not be persuasive to anybody who's conservative because they don't think you should have the same standard for yourself as for your enemies. Mm -hmm. That's why Trump says, oh, they behead people so we can torture them, it doesn't fucking matter. What, what is international law. So when Ted Cruz says that we should carpet bomb cities, when multiple politicians and pundits say we should turn their entire desert into glass, when Trump says we're gonna build a wall to keep out you savages and we're gonna make you pay for it, they don't care that it's a provocation. But yeah, it is stupid on their part. I mean, to some extent, I, I came into this story, one, not really wanting to cover it because the only reason they do any of this is so that it will try to scare other countries. That's why uh, North Korea came out with their we've miniaturized our nuclear weapons uh, program today. That's why, it's so that they can scare people. And I want to dispel the notion that there's, they don't know what they're doing to some extent. They have to scare other countries to get any kind of deals to some extent, to get any kind of aid. The, the, the sorts of things that North Korea has been doing. That's why we give money to North Korea to try to stop their nuclear weapons program. If they didn't keep telling us we're right on the brink of nuking you all, we wouldn't have been doing that for 15 years. In reality, uh, it's now been proven over and over again that we knew that Saddam did not have weapons of mass destruction, right? Mm -hmm. We knew that his son-in-law had gone and, and said we destroyed him because of the sanctions. Mm -hmm. um, Dick Cheney directly lied about that. We had the intelligence report from the Defense Department that Don Rumsfeld marked quote, big deal, yeah. and passed around to everyone but Bush on purpose, right, so, uh, where they said we have 90% uncertainty about their weapons program, 90% uncertainty. So there was lies that we were yeah. certain. And we, so, But when you think about it from Iran's perspective, they're thinking, so these guys knew that Iraq didn't have any weapons, so they invaded them. Yeah. Now, if they think we don't have any weapons because we just signed a treaty to make sure that we don't have any nukes, maybe we're next, yeah. so we've got to threaten them a little bit, hey, 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 we still have weapons, yeah. you better be careful, we're dangerous. Maybe. But that's also a dangerous game to play. Yeah, and, and, and as you said in the beginning, it, it's stupid because you got this deal, uh, Republicans aren't theoretically going to use this uh, ridiculous provocation about destroying Israel to try to ruin the deal, they are right now trying to use it. Let's read a few of these quotes, so first Biden said, if Iran breaks the terms of last year's nuclear deal, it reached with world powers, we will act. A nuclear armed Iran is an absolutely unacceptable threat to Israel, to the region, 
and to the United States. Uh, Biden also uh, condemn, uh, criticized Palestinians, by the way, for their failure to condemn stabbing attacks that claimed the life of an American Vanderbilt University graduate student and wounded others in Israel on Tuesday. This is part and of then, what Fox News will call his apology tour. And then um, he also uh, condemned Israel for occupying uh, the Pal yeah. millions of Palestinians for decades upon decades. Oh, oh no, 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 he, he didn't, didn't do that. He didn't do he that. Didn't do that. Uh, By the way, he should have condemned both those things. He should do both, yes. Yes. Uh, now, of course, Republicans are also jumping on. So Tom Cotton says, it's clear our enemies no longer fear the United States and that Iran is throwing dirt in the face of the entire free world. Apparently having thousands of nuclear weapons isn't enough to make them afraid of us. And then the other, the other right-wingers that you'd expect are jumping on this to try to destroy the deal. I, I have a crazy idea. Why doesn't Iran try to join the world community of nations by not trying to destroy Israel or any other country, not developing nuclear weapons, which thankfully now they can't thanks to the deal. That just, that goes in all these articles, it goes unsaid, that they had a much better chance of getting nuclear weapons in the short term if the deal hadn't happened. I don't know why that isn't the follow-up question every time they say they would get rid of it. And, and I know why they're not they're gonna just do that, because they have their own internal political pressures that like the effect we see on right-wingers in this country are causing them to start trying to flip off every country they can. Because if they think it will benefit them individually, it doesn't matter if it terrorizes the entire region, if it potentially condemns their own citizens to dying in some sort of war, they will do it because that's their job. It's the easiest political tricks of all time. I am strong. I will protect you against the others. The others are e evil and must be wiped out. And only one person can protect you, me. Yeah. Um, Trump, Putin, Erdogan, Netanyahu, uh, and, and the leaders of Iran. Yeah. So. It's all over the world, and by the way, that's just the latest examples. You could list thousands of examples from all over the world, right? Watch out, they're going to kill you all. The only one who can protect me is, to protect you guys is me. And by the way, on top of that, God told me so. Yeah, yeah, and here I am just thinking, why don't, can't we all just get along? <laughs> yeah. Why can't that be a winning political message? How about peace and prosperity? Okay, and, and so one last thing on this, you know, their leaders are crazy religious zealots because they said God uh, told them so. Um, and then our leaders nonstop, God has picked this country to be the greatest country, God this, God, God that. God told me to run. Right, God told me to run. J J Bush talked about how God told him the, uh, you know, the biblical monsters were coming out of Iraq. He literally told the French leader that, unbelievable, Mog right? Mog and Magog or whatever. That, that's right. And I can't believe they put uh, something in Hebrew on their missiles, whereas we have put Bible verses on our planes, on our rifles, on the ACOG scopes, uh, and, and and on our missiles. Now, the military didn't do that. The official U.S. government didn't do that, and that is a big difference. But third-party contractors did, and some party contractors have. Some of our troops have, and then when somebody gets hit by a plane or a missile or a bullet that has a Bible verse on it, a bullet would be kind of hard, but a rifle that fires a bullet that has a Bible verse on it, well, they're just as pissed, right? Yeah. So it's a really bad idea when either side does yeah, it. Yeah, and, that, and that's what we're saying. Neither side should do it. Let's yes. get religion out of politics on both sides.